Morning, 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 everybody. How you doing? Welcome back to the Spurs Talk Show. I'm Sean Butler. I think you can see Bugsy over my shoulder. How's things? Hope you're happy and healthy. Hope you are feeling not too despondent, not too heartbroken this morning. I hope you can draw some comfort and we're going to talk about ways in which we can do that, ways in which Tottenham Hotspur can move forward. It's the dawn of a new era. It's a weird time to set a dawn on the sunset before the season opener. <laughs> but it is what it is. These things are what they are. We'll talk about it right now. Please do me a favor, smash the like button for me on the video like you always do. Smash the subscribe on the channel if you haven't already. We're on the march to 15K. Hopefully we'll be there at some point. Hit the notification bell and drop a comment. Let me know your thoughts on today's topic. Guys, it's all about Harry Kane. Late last night, we had the official David Ornstein exclusive that it's done, that Harry Kane was given permission to fly to Germany and take his medical. Then this morning, we wake up to the here we go from Fabrizio Romano. But then we hear and I think I'm talking about this in the correct chronological order, then we hear that Harry Kane and his family are at Stansted Airport and they're told that he's told that he's not allowed to fly yet because there were some structural changes to the deal at the last minute and Daniel Levy was conducting it from America and consequently permission wasn't given. I think then it was given. He's now gone. The here we go is in and... Tottenham have to look forward to, I guess it's a total rebuild now, isn't it? A total transformation. One that doesn't include, include our club's record striker. And like I said at the start, the timing of it, making us wait all the way through the summer and then dropping it on us 48 hours before our season opener is just about as disruptive as you could possibly get for Ange Postacoglu. He can't be best pleased. And I think the only way that he'll be satisfied or will be okay with this is if the majority of that money has not already been spent and that it can now be further spent on replacements. We'll talk about that in a second. In terms of the money itself, well, there was mixed messages all last night. You know, we were talking about it on the panel shows um, with Johnny yesterday, it came across to me, looking at the details earlier, that the number was the same, if not less, than what had been previously rejected. And so we were speculating as to whether or not the structure of the deal, how much money was going to be sent up front, whether or not the um, add-ons were more or easily uh, accessible, etc. Because it didn't really make sense. Why would you reject a number a week earlier? that was the same or slightly higher. But anyway, it turns out this morning that the deal is probably structured at around 100 million pounds. So 115, 120 million euros with an extra 20 million pounds in add-ons. Don't know how achievable the add-ons are. They might be just winning the Bundesliga, in which case it's highly likely we'll see all of it. They might be um, structured around winning the Champions League, in which case, in my opinion, I don't think we'll see much of it at all because I just don't think that Harry Kane is a kingmaker to Bayern Munich. I, I think that he massively improves them, but I, like I said before, I don't think that they win anything more domestically than they already would have done without him. And so are, are you looking at a player who's costing 100 to 120 million pounds that only shows and demonstrates the value if he lifts the Champions League. Time will tell. They certainly close the gap on the likes of City and Real Madrid with Harry Kane up the top, but I still don't think necessarily that they're stronger throughout the rest of their squad than those two teams necessarily. So I don't know, it's a big risk for Bayern. It's a big step forward for Harry Kane. Personally, I want to wish him all the best. I want to say thank you for all the memories. But that's about it. I want to move on. No mourning period for me. No 
You know, I'm not going to sit there and look at highlight reels and cry myself over a cup of cocoa this evening. You know, none of that. We've got to move on. We have to get the squad ready. Sunday is going to be disrupted. It is, right? And I think that everyone will probably agree, I hope you would agree, that the timing of it is awful. But I think the deal itself is probably brilliant value. £120 million, assuming you'll get the other 20. And again, I've got no idea what that 20 million in add-ons looks like, whether it's just him being golden boot or winning domestic doubles and, and stuff like that. And look, even if they do go on to win the Champions League, and they might, then it doesn't bother me. Congratulations to them. And I'd hope that they do if it means that they get the that we get the extra 20 million. But 120 million for me is brilliant value. Uh, for a 30-year-old, last year of his contract, the risk-reward of not accepting that, to me, was unfathomable because he would be guilty of gross negligence had he not accepted it. Harry Kane stayed for the season, not signed a contract and left for free. And then not only are you not recuperating, not, not only are you then losing the 120 million, but you're also potentially losing him to a rival, and it, it would have been a rival like Manchester United. So it's kind of... I guess like a win-win-lose doing the deal this way. We stop Man United from having our best player for free in a year's time. We take him out of the Premier League altogether. We get £120 million and we can go again. And I think we have to go again. There are going to be the fans who are saying, you know, and I've seen it on Twitter, that Daniel Levy is guilty of gross negligence or gross misconduct for the timing of the exit letting it happen at this particular stage and I can understand the frustration but I've seen those tweets and those t people that were tweeting that like yesterday are the same people that were tweeting if you let him go for free at the end of next year then that is also gr guilty of gross negligence to some people Daniel Levy can't do right for doing wrong and I get it people have their own you know assumptions and have made their minds up about Daniel Levy so he was never going to come out of this with 100% um, box ticking but I completely acknowledge that the timing of it is disruptive it is disruptive to the Brentford game it's not going to be disruptive to the Manchester United game or any of the games after that we've got enough time to, to prepare we have enough options even without bringing new players in to be able to get through of course it's going to be a hit not being able to rely on your 25 to 30 goal a season man but I do think that we're going to create enough chances and have enough talent in the top end of the pitch to be able to replace some if not a lot of that of those goals and with a couple of additional players coming in with that money then I think that Tottenham can actually end up looking stronger as a consequence because I've said this before would you rather have Harry Kane here and the rest of the team stay as it is or would you rather lose Harry Kane for 120 million for example and then put that money to work replacing him at the top end as best you can, even though it's an impossible task to fully replace him, but also then go and plug in the final holes down the other end of the pitch. And to me, I would take the latter option. I would rather him leave, get the money and put it to work. And we do need to put it to work. We need at least another centre back. In my opinion, I'm not sure we'll do this because I think there's too much change in one window can have its own set of problems. But I do believe we have issues at right back. I think Emerson Royale is our only real recognisable right back. And if he gets injured, I think we're bang in trouble. I think Pedro Porro has demonstrated time and time again that he's not a very positionally aware defender. And that's an issue. I feel like we've, we're kind of stuck with a square peg and a round hole for Pedro Porro. I love the man. I love his attitude. I love his personality and his desire and his hunger. I haven't been impressed with him defensively and I think the people that are saying he's a right winger, I think they're saying it because they know he's not a right back. I'm not entirely convinced he's a right winger either. Ange Postacoglu I don't believe is either because when Jed Spence was brought on for Perisic against Barcelona, he moved Solomon over to the left and played Jed Spence at right wing and kept Porro at right back which was weird to me. I would like to have seen Porro. I definitely think he suits right wing more than he suits right back. But I'm still not entirely convinced he suits right wing either. He doesn't have the quickness of feet like a Solomon. He doesn't have the strength of a, of a Deki. He's a technical player. But I'm not sure you need technicality specialists 
in that wing position. So we'll find out though, who am I? I don't know, time will tell. We haven't seen a sample size really of him in that role enough to know, but we will find out. Anyway, to me, I think we do need a right back or at least someone that can cover in that area should we, um, should we need it, should there be an injury to, to Emerson Royale. And for what it's worth, I'm not even massively impressed in the preseason with Emerson Royale's positional um, strengths yet, being asked to play in that kind of inverted position where he was almost playing alongside the six. I don't think he's covered himself in glory uh, in the early stages of that position, but he'll improve. We will improve with the positional play. So I would like to see Tottenham go and sign a player who, you know, in an ideal world, you'd like to go and get a six, a centre back and a right back alongside a forward. A forward to obviously cover Harry Kane and Brian Hill's injuries uh, or departure. And then a six if you sell Hoybier. And then you just need another centre back anyway, presuming you're going to lose Eric Dyer or Sanchez. And like I said, a right back um, for depth. But I don't think you can really bring four players in at this stage in the window because you've still got a bloated squad having only moved on Harry Winks and Joe Roden. It's going to be tricky to find space and to move everybody else out. So what I would do is I'd settle for people that can play hybrids. And there's a couple. I've mentioned them before. I think Benjamin Pavard, funnily enough, is at Bayern Munich. I think he's a wonderful option. He's traditionally a right back, but then last year was asked to move to a right-sided centre-back with Bayern Munich under the later stages of Nagelsmann and then latterly Thomas Tuchel's uh, formation. He's come in because of, is it Masrawi who plays right back now? And there's been a bit of a shuffle and a shift around with De Ligt and um, Umpa Meccano. Lots of changes there, but ultimately Pavard, for me, is a very, very talented and a very balanced player who can get forward, got a good cross on him, can provide all of the additional support, but also knows that system, knows that role very well of playing or well, the way that Bayern Munich do it is more of a 3-1-5-1 system, whereas we'd be doing more of a 3-2 or a 2-3-5 when we have the ball. But Pavard knows that role and can tuck in. And he can play on uh, right side of centre back if there's an injury to Romano, uh, to Romero, sorry, and he can play right back if there are injuries to Emerson and compete. He's a very, very talented player. Whether he would like to come to Tottenham, I don't know. Another player that I've uh, been looking at is Gerd Truida from PSV Eindhoven, who is a brilliant ball playing defender. I'm going to say defender broadly because he is someone who, uh, who, plays, who can play right back, he can play right sided centre back, he can play left sided centre back, and he can play in the six. He's essentially a brilliantly ut utility player, a brilliantly versatile player who can play all over the back line, apart from left back and sit in that six. Tough, strong, he's six foot, six foot one. He's fast, he dribbles on the ball like a Dembele. Uh, really, really interesting player and someone that I'm a big fan of. Obviously, there's other players out there that we can look at as well, that we still haven't seen the, the conclusions of their trades, like um, Sofian Amrabat, for example, in the six. He's still available for 25 million. He hasn't signed for United yet. Does us having that money right now change things? I'm not entirely sure. And so to me, the roles that we need help in, there are still talents and access to them out there. I worry about how many players we really need. I also worry about if you do go and find three or four, not only is it going to be impossible to move the rest of the players out that we don't need, it's also going to be a problem with just too many new faces and new names in the dressing room alongside a whole new style. Sometimes Rome wasn't built in a day. Sometimes you have to kind of just accept that this season is a transformational one. It's a rebuild. There's going to be ups and downs. And I've said before, with regards to losing Harry Kane, you can't replace Harry Kane, but you can lessen the impact of losing him. And I feel like in this system, you could feel the impact of not having Harry Kane less than you would to any other system as long as you go and use the money wisely. Some people on Twitter I've seen this morning are saying to me, Sean, that money's already been spent, bro. Forget about it. We're not buying anyone else. We're replacing the money we've already spent. 
if that is the case then i would be i'd be incredibly frustrated and infuriated with the ownership there should be more money available there should have been the amount of money available that we've already spent there should have been that money available anyway and the harry kane money should be able to go and allow us to go again we have spent a lot of money but the money for Poro and the money for Kulosevsky should have been allocated a long time ago when those deals were done. And the money for the rest, well, you know what? What happened to the 50 million pound from the 150 that was never taken? That still hasn't been allocated to the books. What about all the Champions League money and the concert money and all that stuff? You know, Tottenham have got, you know, how was it the fourth or the third highest revenue in the Premier League. Other clubs seem to be able to find enough budget to go and go again. Tottenham should be able to do it. Tottenham should be, we should be able to take at least 60, 70 million out of that budget and go again. And if we can't, then in my opinion, it's really poor planning or it shows the demonstration of intent from our owners. And when you couple that with the timing of the deal, it does leave a bit of a bad taste in your mouth. However, if we take the money and we go again, then I think if you get a couple of good players in that really fill those holes, then I think you could look at Daniel Levy and say, okay, timing aside, it's a really good deal. Allocate the money, fill the holes, and we are probably better off for the scenario playing out the way it has. Yes, we'll struggle against Brentford. The preparation for Brentford is a little bit up in the air, but there'll be enough time to go and prepare for, for Manchester United without Harry Kane. And the season is a marathon. It's not a sprint. Nothing is decided against Brentford. Does it change my prediction for the Brentford game? You know what? It doesn't. I still think Tottenham are going to win. I think we're going to win 2-1. And I think that Madison is going to step up. He's going to get the number 10 shirt. He might even get the armband. I think it would be awesome to give this guy a shed load of responsibility because I feel like this guy is the sort of player, sort of character who would thrive under that pressure, under that responsibility. And, you know, we're going to need James Madison this year to, to pull up trees and to get us 25 goal assist contributions, maybe even 30. If he can get 15 and 15 or something like that, then we're halfway to replacing Harry Kane's loss. Go and get Gift Orban. I like this kid. Every time I've seen him play, and I've, the more and more I've looked into him, the more and more I've seen additional strengths to his profile that I hadn't noticed before. He's got a vision on him that is brilliant. He's got a very intelligent brain. He knows where to be. It's not just brute strength, power and pace with a good finish. He's actually very intelligent with the way he moves into spaces to find the ball. And I think you could have an absolute superstar on your hands there. Maybe his, his price has gone up from 25 to 35 now, but you know what? Pay it anyway. Pay it anyway, and then go and get yourself a centre back. Hopefully, one that could also play right back. For me, Pavard or Gertrude is good. If not, I'm still up for Tapsoba, still up for Tosin. Any of those will do. Just need a little bit more strength and support in there. And we'll be okay, guys. We will be okay. Let me know your thoughts. How are you feeling on the whole thing? Like, subscribe, and comment. And as always, bye bye.